Hello there everyone, this is UXW Bill bringing you a short, sweet, and to-the-point video. Some of you out there in the viewing audience who have caught my HamFest finds video for 2016 probably remember my making mention of the fact that my Canon FS200 camcorder's power supply seemed to have stopped working. I was using the camcorder as a video source back in my broadcast studio, and I left the power supply sitting there plugged in for a very long period of time. I kind of forgot about it, and I figured that it had suffered some sort of an internal breakdown because I was measuring absolutely no voltage at its output. I had plenty of voltage at the input, and I put my ear up to the case to see if maybe I could hear it doing something like cycling in and out of overcurrent protection. I might have gone deeper than that, although it's seldom, if ever, worth repairing these things because it's not expensive to get another example of a genuine power supply, which is the only kind you should ever buy. But Canon elected to hold this thing together with a Security Torx screw. And right now it just so happens that I don't actually know where my Security Torx bits are. The keykeeper was probably using them inappropriately and didn't return them to me, or stole them from me, less charitably put. Well, tonight I discovered what was wrong with the Canon FS200's power supply, and it was not an internal fault after all. You see, I have this little wireless security camera here that I'll be using for a future project that I may talk more about at some point, and I had lost the connector from its power supply. I just so happened to notice that the Canon FS200's power connector was identical, or at least compatible enough to work, so, figuring that this power supply was down for the count, I clipped it off, hooked it up to my variable regulated power supply, and it hit the current limit big time. The amperage shot way up and the voltage dropped way down, and that was when I realized that the problem probably wasn't in the poor innocent FS200 power supply brick itself. It turns out that there was actually a short in this cable. But it's totally not where I would have expected to see it, and I'll tell you a little bit about why I felt that way. Suffice it to say, I have repaired it, and it is functioning once again. The fault was actually right up here in this rubber molded plug assembly. It had shorted at the point of the connector on the back where the pins actually connect to the wiring that would in turn connect it to the power supply. I don't know how something like that happens. I would have thought that this assembly was completely molded in rubber and obviously impervious to shorts unless it were to be very nearly physically destroyed. But I decided to go ahead and investigate a little further, even though something like this is rarely, if ever, considered to be a repairable fault. I took a set of side cutters, which you might sometimes hear referred to as dikes, especially across the pond. I know we use that term sometimes here in the United States to reference this tool, but I believe it's more common in the European region of the world. And I carefully nibbled away the rubber around the connector plug until I could see the pins. I never actually saw them shorted, but I had an ohmmeter hooked up, just one of these cheap little jobbies. It's more than good enough for that, especially with this continuity tone check. And I noticed that if I wiggled this back and forth, the resistance figure would change dramatically. Again, I have no idea how it happened. This thing should have been practically mummified in rubber, but maybe somebody stepped on it. Maybe I dropped something heavy on it. It's really hard to tell for sure. Whatever the case, it was definitely shorted. With all that rubber peeled away, I was able to carefully separate the contacts, though they did not appear to be shorted. And being the hot glue gun artist that I'd like to think I am, I encapsulated the whole mess in hot glue. And as you can see from the blinking light here on the Canon FS200 camcorder, which is what it is supposed to do when it's charging the battery, it's working perfectly well. I've already gone ahead and purchased a replacement power supply from eBay. They're about 20 bucks. It's not all the money in the world. I can probably find another connector for this one. I just thought it was very interesting. The mode of failure and the fact that I was ultimately able to repair it, and I wanted to take just a moment and share all of that with you. I am, of course, eagerly interested in hearing your comments on this particular video, so please do feel free to leave a comment if you happen to have one, and especially if you have ever made a repair of a similar nature yourself and it turned out to work, or even if it didn't turn out to work. About the only comment I don't want to hear is from the portion of the crowd that doesn't think any video is worth watching unless it happens to be in high definition. Folks, standard definition video doesn't look that bad. 
And if you feel that it does, you need to have a nice fireside chat with your device manufacturer or software vendor asking them to include a better upscaler. For everyone else, thank you for watching. I certainly hope this video was informative and useful, and I eagerly await your comments.